Hello and welcome to another episode of AI Buzz. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have some cool things out of the world of machine learning, artificial intelligence to talk to you about. And what does that mean? We're going to be looking at the world of automated machine learning. And this specifically came to light because the company Data Robot is preparing to do an initial public offering, IPO, uh, coming up soon, most likely. They recently raised $270 million, uh, led by Altimeter Capital, and they've been raising funding for, for many years now, and they're definitely one of the hottest uh, automated ML startups, besides probably Google, which is, of course, not a startup. Um, they specialize in a product that Essentially, you give it uh, all this data that you have. It can even do some data cleaning, though that's not really what they started out doing. Um, they started out where you'll give them data and they will uh, try a bunch of different models training that data, trying to optimize it on a target and uh, eventually finding a model that works for your data set and then tuning all the different hyperparameters so that, that you don't have to spend uh, a large amount of time doing all that tuning yourself. Uh, and that's, that's a really exciting development in the world of machine learning the past couple of years. Usually uh, in the past, you'd require kind of someone who really understood how the model worked to be kind of tuning these different parameters and making sure that they could optimize the performance. However, uh, you know, with, with a, increase in, in power of uh, GPUs and, uh, you know, even TPUs, you're able to cycle through things more, uh, you can be you can be less choosy about what you're cycling through. So you can kind of try a different bunch of, uh, you know, a wide range of different parameters to, to optimize performance. Um, and that's really the goal of these, these types of products. Um, so they're not they're not brute force. Uh, typically, uh, they don't they don't search every combination of, of hyperparameter, uh, but they will they'll try a bunch and they'll then intelligently choose which which one to try next. And companies love Data Robot. Um, it's definitely been been blowing up these last couple of years. Uh, clearly, they are on the road to an IPO. Um, so I found this cool article here, kind of details. Some of the recent developments with the the company's uh, finances, and um, so they raised two hundred seventy million dollars, uh, two point seven billion dollar valuation, um, and yeah, it's really really exciting to kind of see this out of Data Robot because they they've only been around for eight years, and um, they're they're absolutely crushing it with with this this product, and. Um, go a little more into detail about um, one of their competitors, which comes from the behemoth Google. Uh, so Google has AutoML, um, which attempts to kind of compete with Data Robot's main product. And AutoML is the same concept. It's it's essentially going to be looking at different, different ways to tweak uh, and optimize performance of machine learning models. So they Definitely have a pretty built out suite of products. Uh, probably their most comprehensive one is their unified AI platform uh, shown here on their website. And um, essentially you can look at any type of data. So you can be looking at image, video, text, uh, tabular data, and uh, you know, definitely a lot of cool offerings out of them. However, you don't, you don't really hear about companies using AutoML all that much uh, from Google. <laughs> Uh, data robot maybe they're maybe they're better at marketing um, than Google is at this with this particular product uh, but usually when you kind of think of this use case you'll you'll hear most about data robot which is which is great um, so I can go a little in a little more detail about the auto ML product that Google has and um, so there's some, some pretty cool customers here different case studies um, and their actual unified platform, which is shown here, really it's it's trying to uh, decrease the barrier to deploying a machine learning model. 
And what they are looking to do is just you feed it a raw data set and then it goes through building. Uh, so that means training, um, validating and explaining. And that's something that I'm not aware of that data robots product has is the explainable AI feature, which is really cool. So essentially it's going to try to find the features that it's honing in on in your model. Um, it's going to try to explain what's really going on underneath the hood. And I think that's great because it allows you to sort of look and see if it's uh, becoming locally optimized. Cause what, what, what will happen with a lot of these, uh, a lot of machine learning uh, models is they'll become locally optimized, kind of stuck in a rut. Like if you think of, if you think of a uh, kind of a ravine and the, the goal of a machine learning uh, model training it is to get a ball to the lowest point of that ravine. Well, there's a couple kind of uh, uh, fake bottoms, if, if that makes sense, where it might seem like the ball has reached the bottom, but it's not able to get over over the hill and, and reach the true bottom. So these types of solutions will will often get kind of stuck and it's good to see what is going on underneath the hood and uh, see if someone can can maybe change some settings and, and get it to be unstuck and, and fully optimize itself. Um, so really cool feature. I'll have to, I'll have to look at um, some of the latest uh, products out of Data Robot. See if they have anything comparable. Um, I do know that Google was kind of the first to make this push towards explainable AI. And um, yeah, I imagine there will be some close followers to that. But I think I think Google might be pretty far ahead at this point in that in that field. But yeah, I'll have to do a little more reading on that, I suppose. Um, and then after the validation they will go to deployment. So <laughs> pretty wild. They, they have like TensorFlow Enterprise. Um, haven't heard too many people that use that. Um, but again, contrasting this with DataRobot, uh, DataRobot is, is, is widely used by a lot of big companies. Let me, let me show you some of the, um, some of their, their partners. I, You'll see, you'll, you'll see the wide range of companies that they are, are partnering with. Um, so they, they're, they're looking at, at banking, healthcare, uh, financial tech, uh, the gaming industry. Yeah, so some of the coolest partners that Data Robot has uh, are listed on this page. And definitely some huge names here. So Blue Cross, Blue Shield. Um, Deloitte, it's definitely a big name. <laughs> um, and what's really cool about Data Robot is they, they do lots of case studies, which are, are really good marketing materials. Um, you know, pick a, pick a customer and show how they use your product to solve one of their, their problems. And uh, there's, they have a lot of those here for you to check out. Uh, I'll, I'll put this link in the description. So covering kind of two of these automated machine learning pipeline products. So one out of data robot, one out of auto ML, uh, Google, this is definitely a development that's going to keep improving, uh, in the next couple of years as, as the, the kinks get worked out of these types of solutions. And, um, it's kind of a double, double edged sword because on one hand, uh, you don't, you don't have to go in and manually tune these parameters. On the other hand, that was one of the really fun parts of uh, machine learning was going in and kind of tweaking these around and, and seeing how your, your model would perform. At least that was one of my favorite components of it. Um, you know, cause usually to kind of get to that point, you have to spend a lot of time cleaning your data, dealing with uh, date time stamps, missing values, centering, yeah, centering your data around, uh, you know, make sure it has like unit variance for each column, you know, a lot, of, a lot of things like that to kind of get it ready for plugging it into one of these models. So a lot of work and a lot of people do not enjoy <laughs> doing it because it's, it takes a lot of time, especially with huge data sets. Um, 
can take a lot of time to crunch through all that. So you finally get to the, the part where you can train your model. You have your, your nice pristine, or, or so you think it's pristine uh, data set. Uh, you're, you're ready to pump it through this model, but you know, AutoML is going to try way more combinations and find a better one faster than you. So you can still do it manually, but if it's, if it's so much further ahead, then um, it probably won't become common practice in a couple of years for, for most uh, companies to, to want to be paying uh, a human to be, to be manually tuning these models. Uh, that being said, there was a really cool article coming out of the Harvard Business Review where they talk about the risks of auto ML and how to avoid them. And uh, I think this is uh, a good review to sort of read before this becomes too commonplace because while the actual tuning might be done programmatically, we also are always going to want we're always going to want someone who understands what's going on under the hood to be watching how these are, are performing. <laughs> so you don't want to just blindly trust what these things are pumping out. Um, you're still going to, you're still going to want um, a data scientist to be watching what they're optimizing on. Uh, so that's why I like that explainable AI feature. Uh, someone who knows how it works to really be checking in on this and making sure that uh, it's working as it's supposed to, instead of just, you know, becoming a black box where companies are, are feeding these raw data sets and then just straight productionizing the result. <laughs> there, there really needs to be uh, some, some middle, you know, some, some people in the middle, humans in the middle to be checking in on it at the very least, in my opinion. I think that's that's kind of a good uh, practice across a lot of these um, hot AI areas is while they've been shown to, to really crush human performance in, in many areas, uh, I think I think humans will still find a place, um, at least in the short term, to kind of be checking in and make sure these are, are working as they're supposed to. So definitely check out this article here. Um, they talk about how auto ML in a recent Kaggle competition placed second out of all competitors. <laughs> so, you know, the best data scientists in the world are, are winning Kaggle competitions and spending sometimes months of their time to, to come up with the best ensembled model. Um, and these models are not simple at all. <laughs> One of my favorite examples of this was uh, the Netflix uh, Millennium Prize that Kaggle put out it was one of their. It really gained them a lot of notoriety uh, back kind of when Kaggle was first catching on. Um, so they they offered a million dollars. Netflix offered a million dollars to anyone who could improve their recommendation engine, and people got really excited about this. It was kind of a, a first of its kind. There have since been many million dollar uh, prizes one coming out of Zillow, a couple others as well. But this was the first. People were really excited about this. And as you can imagine, uh, people really went to work trying to win that million dollars. <laughs> well, the winner of this competition, the winners, came out of Bell Laboratories. And there was three. And they had this ensemble model that was so complicated <laughs> that Netflix, they paid them the prize money, but they could not productionize this model because it was way too complicated. Like, I guess to actually, to make predictions of this thing, it was, it was too computationally expensive. Um, <laughs> so the, the, the goal was not to come up with the best production model. The goal was just to optimize the target variable, which they did really well, <laughs> but they also uh, did not make a model that really had a lot of use in the real world because it was it had had so many ensembles to it. Um, so that being said, we need to be checking in on how AutoML is, um, you know, building these ensembles because they it can very easily do something like that. <laughs> um, and maybe you need a human to dial it back and say, no, we don't we don't want 
we don't want you know five layers of ensembled models. So you know I should explain it. an ensemble is you take uh, the output of your first layer of models and you feed that into uh, the next layer of models as the input. So people who are winning Kaggle competitions stack layers of models. So you'll you'll take uh, say five random forest models. Uh, that have been trained, you'll take uh, several neural networks that have been trained, you'll use this as your first layer, uh, and then and then pump in the uh, raw data set, the outputs from those models are used as the inputs to another layer of, say, five random forests and five neural networks. So these can get pretty stacked up. <laughs> and uh, we, we don't want auto ML coming up with that type of solution where, you know, to actually make an inference on your data to, to make a prediction on your data, you're going to require a whole data center to do, you know, like we, we need some balance uh, of, of practicality and accuracy. So I think humans needs to stay in the loop, at least for now. And that's about all I had. I definitely recommend checking out this uh, review article as well as some of the latest from data robot. Um, Thanks so much for tuning in today. Have a good day. Bye.